Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, and today we are going to be doing a recreation of perhaps the most the most Kerbal rocket ever designed. This is the uh, recreation of the uh, the Boeing LMLV. Uh, this is a uh, a concept rocket which was studied in 1968, actually a NASA sponsored uh, study. Uh, the LMLV stands for Large Multipurpose Launch Vehicle, and this thing is basically like like a Sea Dragon, but like more. Um, this thing, this thing really takes the more boosters approach to the maximum. It has, um, at its most, ten giant SRBs um, radially attached to the side. Like um, the Clydesdales are even, uh, even a little bit too small to, than the real ones. The real ones are super ridiculously wide. Um, there's actually a great video on this thing by a uh, YouTuber Has Hayes Grayot. I com probably completely butchered that. I'm sorry, but he did a, he did a really great. Um, a really great little render and video of it so I, i'll link his the thing in the description but this thing this is this really is the most kerbal rocket ever it is absolutely absurd it has like i don't even know how many engines i, I have 20 vectors on the bottom and what you can see what i'm doing now is i'm building like an aero spike um what, what they actually do in real life is you point the engines towards that little spike thing and they would the th um the exhaust would kind of deflect off of it and you'd actually get more thrust out of uh, out of the engines um, that obviously doesn't work at KSP, so I'm not going to be, like, gimbling them towards, because, um, all that would do is reduce my thrust and probably melt the fairing in the process, so, uh, yeah, so that's the real, this thing is just insane, like, there is, just, it's just, it, this thing is, like, um, my recreation KSP does not do this thing justice, it is absolutely massive, um, it's kind of constrained in KSP because of the size of the Clydesdale SRB, um, in real life, this thing can carry 4.8 two million pounds of payload oh that's what the proposal was like uh that's insane i don't really know what the the kilograms or the tons of that is um but it, it is insane this thing would be bigger than the sea dragon i think it is it is absurdly huge it is like taller and fat it's things like it's it, it, uh, it's just that big i don't even it's it's just massive it's thing it is it is absurdly huge um so yeah we're doing a recreation of it today so what i'm going to be doing so uh, we're building the upper stage right now. It has uh, two stages, then kind of three if you count the boosts as a stage. It has those uh, 10 SRBs. And the way I was able to get 10-way symmetry is this great mod I installed today. Uh, it is called um, uh, Editor Extensions Redux. Um, it basically just allows you to like auto shred everything easier and do like custom symmetries and stuff and custom snapping. A really great mod. Totally get it. Great mod. Um, totally my recommendation, right? <laughs> um, Pyolid approved. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Probably a bad thing. Either way. Um, um, yeah, we're just getting the stage finalized, and then uh, we have um, top area. We're gonna be putting our payload. We're really just gonna be. I want. I wanted to see how much this thing could carry. Um, more than that. More than can fit in the the um, <laughs> fairing. This thing is actually volume limited rather than like weight limited like normally a rocket you have a fairing but you can only fill it with so much this thing you have like a, the, the fairing the size of the fairing is what constrains the amount of weight you can carry this thing is massive so i i, I decided to build like a little bit of a interplanetary vehicle thing that we'll be able to show off a little bit later in the video um, basically it's like a big old big old kind of rocket thing that has aero spikes on the bottom and a ton of fuel and isru and drills so what it can do is it can um it can uh, it can go to different planets and uh, refuel and stuff. Um, really cool, really cool little thing here. It's got about three thousand meters a second of delta v. Uh, it can go uh, everywhere except Leif, Eve, and maybe Tylo. I don't think it, it could. It could maybe do Tylo. Um, it'd be pretty tricky to do Tylo, but it might be able to. So yeah, um, that's basically the gist of this thing that we're building. Um, I really just wanted to fill it with as much fuel as possible to just kind of stress the limits, to stretch the limits of this rocket. Limits are not even close to stretched. Um, yeah, this thing is insane. You'll see. Um, we have to throttle the main vector engines super low during the launch, or else this thing is like flying at 10 Gs of acceleration, like 30 seconds off. It's ridiculous. The thing is absurd. Uh, this has got to be the most Kerbal rocket ever designed. Um, if you are enjoying the video though, do quickly get the plugs out of the way, oh my gosh guys, join the Discord, oh my gosh, smash the subscribe button, OMG, I try to upload daily videos, um, I've been kind of failing at that this month, um, I've had a lot of crap going on, um, uh, this month, um, bit of, bit, yeah, been, every, I've been kind of out of it this month, I don't know, I don't know what January is, maybe January is just a cursed month or something, but, um, I have some pretty ambitious plans, so, um, do apologize, uh, that I've been missing some uploads lately, 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with myself, but, um, uh, yeah, it's some stuff just out of my control that I, like, have been places and stuff, so, February is gonna be great, we're gonna get 10 billion subscribers in February, I cannot wait, it's gonna be great, that's totally a thing that's realistic and totally gonna happen. I don't know, maybe I'll get a shout-out from Matt Lown or something. <laughs> oh, I said I was gonna start doing vodka reviews, didn't I? If you don't know, Matt Lown does whiskey reviews, I could do vodka reviews. <laughs> Uh, I don't have any vodkas in mind yet. Someone recommended a vodka to review in my last, my video where I talked about starting the vodka reviews. Maybe I'll have to do that. I'll have to, I'll have to do my vodka research, but yeah. Um, that's going to bring us to the end of the build time lapse now, and we can go ahead and now uh, crossfade over to our launch. So here is this big old chunker sitting on the launch pad, getting ready to take take flight this thing is insane like this thing is like not correct like imagine this and then like times 10 like you know that's what this thing is really like it's insane so we've now launched i'm gonna get the, the time lapse going in a second i have the vectors throttled down to one third of their thrust like you have to throttle these really really low especially during um especially important when you get to the end of the srb because when the srbs are close to burning out they don't have a lot of fuel so their thrust away gets pretty insane so we get we pull like six g's basically um uh, right before booster separation. It's, it's crazy. We're pitching super aggressively, not aggressively, but we're doing a pretty kind of flat-ish descent profile. Um, I'm going to be going to a 500 by 500 kilometer orbit, because why the crap not? Um, <laughs> uh, as, as the uh, as the SRBs are getting ready to uh, get ready to burn out here and starting to get a lot of heating, so yeah, you can see that G-meter just slowly making its way up as we get ready to separate the boosters in 3, 2, 1... Cut off and set. There we go. Pretty cool looking separation. Um, Separatrons are cool, right? Um, so now I'm just going to leave the vector throttle to a third. Just, you know, why not? Our, our time to wrap up is super long. No point in really throttling them any higher. Uh, we're going to burn with these for a few few more seconds longer, and then the core stage will run out, and then we can stage that away, and then we can start to fire the upper stage. Um, which, if you saw my build time lapse, I put six. Um, six uh, mainsail engines. I did swap those out for six skipper engines because those mainsails were way too overpowered. And the skippers are still overpowered, but either way. Um, a little bit of clipping going on there with the, with the fairings, but either way, we have managed to separate the stages and now we can uh, get rid of that little interstage thing. Um, like, so that's actually a thing they do on the real rocket, I believe. Um, and then we can get ourselves accelerated on up to orbit. So I'm gonna pop that fairing there, expose our thing. I'm going to do two more burns with this upper stage. I'm going to do one to circularize, and then we're going to do one more burn, because we have quite a bit of fuel left in this thing. One more burn to get ourselves on an interplanetary trajectory, because we are going to be getting out to Duna. That's that be a fun place to try and land this, this big old chonky thing at. Maybe we'll be able to fly to different places in future videos. I don't know. We'll see. So, second to last burn here. Well, we do a correction burn at that stage as well. And it'll be nice ready to get rid of it, not leave any space junk, because then we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to just crash this thing into Duna, or the uh, the bottom the upper stage rather into Duna and then the payload build a nice and land night nice nicely landing yeah. I didn't realize I had better time warp installed there for a second and I like accidentally time warped past my transfer window so well these Kerbals had to wait an extra year so yep they just hung out in low earth low Kerbin orbit for two years that was kind of fun but either way planning our uh burn now um one nice thing about higher orbit obviously um uh, is you uh, have a little bit less burn to, to uh, eject from Kerbin. So only 970 when it's normally like 1050 to 1100 uh, meters a second delta V. Obviously we also had, we had to pay the, you know, we, we, we did a few extra hundred meters a second to get into orbit, but either way. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> words, insert, insert words here. So there we go. Now we're going to plan our correction burn out, out to the Duna Buna. Duna Buna. We're going to do the Duna Duna. Um, Duna's a great place. Make doing it great again. I don't know. <laughs> Mata. And that'll be my next series. I don't know. I do have a pretty cool series. Let me know what you guys think about, like, an interstellar series. Because there's this, like, Galaxies Unbound, I think it's called. That adds, like, a bunch of other solar systems into the game. Um, and then we could, we could go, and then we could get the interstellar extended. We'd get some nice engines, and we could explore other distant worlds and stuff. I feel like that could be a cool video series to do. There's, like, a ton of stuff that that mod added. Um, Galaxies Unbound, like, there are, there's, like, I think 11, 12, 13, 11, four, something. There's a lot of stars. There's, like, 50 planets, basically, and moons. Like, it's, it's a lot. It's crazy. Um, so we'll have to, we'll probably have to do a series about that. Let me know if you guys be interested in that. Um, there's, like, black holes and, like, double stars and moons, orbiting moons. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, 
Uh, either way, um, we're now here at Duna, so back to the reaction on video. Do a little bit of entry burn to keep the solar panels from exploding. Uh, we do have the Delta View of a TWR of like 3.5 here on Duna, 3.8, something around that. So, um, obviously no problem slowing down. We don't need parachutes. Parachutes are for scrubs. Scrubs, I tell you. I don't know. What? I don't know. That was cringy. <laughs> Yeah, but it's kind of weird stuff going on with the aerodynamic or the the heating thing. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's something and I just can't figure out how to calculate the where the the the, the plasma should be. I don't know. KSP. You sometimes you're, you're you're a great game, but sometimes you're really bad. <laughs> I mean, not bad, but like funnily badly programmed. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it is from 2011, so. Yeah. So now we are going to fire up the engines one more time to start our landing burn. Our t burner is three, but we still have a lot of speed to get rid of, so we're going to start the burn nice and early as we a little bit of radial out, just because we did start a little bit late, got to make sure we don't end up crashing into uh, into the surface before we can reduce all our speed, which here we coming now the last few hundred meters a second to start throttling uh, the engines down now as we come in for a good old landing. Here we go. Obviously, this is gonna be the most graceful landing you've ever seen. I bet you guys can't wait. But this is gonna be the smoothest. You guys are just gonna have like, you guys are gonna go crazy how smooth this is. Yeah. So smooth. Hey, if you get there, you get there. You know. So now we're gonna get the things um, worked out here. I'm just gonna crossfade over uh, here to have everything get the drills and stuff deployed. Couldn't really deploy the heat, the um, electrical, whatever they're called, solar panels, because they kind of they block the, the drills or block them either way. Um, that's going to be good to the end of today's video. So, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.